Okay. You you mentioned that that uh, one of your friends, and I believe it's during this firefight, mm -hmm. um, he came in and he mm -hmm. saved you guys' life. Is mm -hmm. is this the same firefight and you saw him get killed about five minutes earlier? A uh, five yes. minutes late after he saved you guys? Same firefight. We were pinned down by that sniper, and I called in bombs, um, uh, like two different occasions to to drop bombs on our location. We couldn't drop them on the buildings around us, so I said, "Screw it, just drop them on us." Um, they wouldn't do that either. Uh, so I was like, "We'll pull a grenade on the pin, and we're gonna hug it, blow ourselves up, and be done with this whole ordeal." We were getting surrounded. Um, I think amongst so, so, all so, that, hold, hold, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry for cutting in because I, I, I just want to make sure we understand this scene. Mm -hmm. It's you and five of your guys. Mm -hmm. um, you're surrounded by the enemy. Mm -hmm. And you literally called in and said, drop a bomb on all of us. And, oh, yeah. and, and, and this, how, how many people would you estimate you were surrounded by? Oh, uh, we found out at the time it felt like a couple of hundred. We didn't find out till we got back. It was like close to seven, eight hundred guys in that entire town. And it was only five of y'all? Five in one location. And then we called in like 30 other guys for reinforcements. But initially it was five of us. Okay. So you call in, look, we're surrounded. It's bullets coming at us from every direction. Just oh, yeah. drop a bomb. I know we're going to, the bomb's going to take us out, but it's also mm -hmm. going to take the enemy out. You call oh, yeah. this in twice? Yeah, I called it in twice. The first time I called it in, um, it was for a 500-pound bomb on an F-16. Uh, the second time, I got in contact with the, it was a, like the uh, B-2 stealth bomber. Um, I thought it was a UFO flying in. And I was like, wow, I've never seen this before. And it was just like a weird movie. I thought I saw Independence Day UFO flying over, and I was going to have some bombs dropped on us with that. Uh, that was around the time where I can hear the, the footsteps of the enemy, like impact on the ground as they were running around us. We were in this little makeshift fighting position they had made. It was uh, like a hole in the ground. We all shoved into there. And a few of the guys who couldn't fit in the hole were sprawled on their backs and laying flat on their stomach, hiding in this like mediocre, somewhat tall grass. And um yeah, you could hear the enemies saying Allah Akbar and running on the ground and, and all that. So uh, I didn't want to get beheaded. I knew we were going to get captured. If they couldn't, you know, kill us, they were running around looking for us. So I just called in for the bombs to be dropped. That way we could we could die and not give the enemy satisfaction and hopefully kill a few of them too. And during all that, we watched the stealth bomber come overhead, but all he did was pop flares and try to scare the enemy away. But he was like 500 feet above us and I could see the bombs in the bottom of the of this airplane flying up, flying overhead. And all they all, all they did was drop uh, flares to scare the enemy. And amongst that whole chaos, uh, after we decided we were gonna pull the pin on a grenade and all hug it, um, the machine gun team heard it over our broken uh, radio calls and he decided he was going to run close to like half a mile through open terrain and gunfire and help us get out. So that's what they did. Uh, they ran over and I remember like as we're giving our goodbyes away, I looked over my shoulder and I thought I saw, this is how like crazy my mind was working. I thought I saw the road runner from like the cartoons, how he kicks up the dust when he's running and his feet are running so fast. I saw that going across the field. I was like, oh, wow, the Roadrunner's here now. First UFO, now the Roadrunner. And I looked again, and it was the machine gun team, like, uh, helping us get out. So we popped smoke. The smoke blew the opposite direction. And uh, um, we just started uh, zigzag and, and get our way out, going off in pairs. Me and my spotter uh, were the last guys to go. And I remember when I got up to run, it felt like I was running on marshmallows or running on clouds. Like my feet never touched the ground. I could feel myself going the fastest I ever sprinted in my life, but I couldn't feel my feet hitting the ground. I looked back and I saw my spotter and he's carrying this big ladder. He's having a hard time. 
And I'm like, dude, drop the ladder, man. Let's run. We have to get out of here. He dropped it. And yeah, we met up with the machine gun team. They gave us some water and I was in charge at that moment. I was the highest ranking person and I let us out in a, a tired mind, not sleeping for, you know, at that point, about 45 minutes of total sleep for five days on that fifth day, made a bad decision. As a sniper, I should have walked in a tree line. We walked this narrow pathway uh, against the tree line and silhouetted ourselves to the, to the enemy. And we got ambushed, danger close. And I watched, you know, yeah, that was a, a mix of a bad call and them having really good fighting positions. And the sniper got, you know, a sight of that. And he picked off the guy who just saved off. He shot him. And as I'm talking to the guy, another guy, we're in chest high water. We uh, head dove into this like ravine, this uh, small ravine full of muddy water. And I'm talking to the guy, uh, platoon leader, like, hey, we need to get to this building. It's less than a 300 meters that way. And I just felt water splash against my face and his body go limp. I looked at him and it was uh, his whole chest had a big hole in it. My spotter stuck his hand in the hole to stop the bleeding. I'm looking at him in front of me, got blood on my face and blood's running down this water from the guy who just saved us, cop who just got hit. He's pale white. He's screaming for his mom and all types of stuff. It was pure chaos. And that sniper picked him off and picked the guy who I was talking to off. I'm yelling in his ear. And he just missed my head and it went into his uh, chest area. So that whole day was, it was, it was that bad. Okay. Um, I, I, I want to give flowers, if, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, to, to the guy who saved your life, because it was so important for you. You, mm -hmm. you told your, your, your team, look, if I die on this day, mm -hmm. let my parents know that I fought like hell. Yeah. Who was the guy? What was the name of the guy that came and saved your lives? Benjamin Cobb. Um, I got him tattooed on my arm, but yeah, he didn't. He he died a few days later. So he fought that whole day. We fought for nine hours. There's a nine-hour firefight. Um, he gets hit towards the ending of it. We evacuate him. They flew him to one hospital, and the electricity went out. So they couldn't operate, do the things that they needed to do. So they had to fly them to another hospital in Afghanistan. Um, they kind of resuscitated them, worked them out there, uh, uh, got them stable enough to where he could fly to um, Germany and then from Germany to the States. He made it all the way back, fought through all that. It was like on the seventh day, the seventh day he died. Um, yeah, he made it in time to go back to see his mom. And then that's when he died. So he fought, he was technically like dead, you know, but he had enough life to go see that last moment. And then that's when he, that's when he died. And I'll never forget that day. The, uh, my platoon sergeant came up to our room, the sniper room, and uh, he told me and my spotter, hey, you know, Ben Benjamin Cop died today. If you guys need, uh, need anything, let me know. But yeah, that was a that was a bad day. July, I want to say it was July 18th. July 18th is when he died. Yeah. You, you know, I, I want to put this in perspective for everybody who is watching or listening to this on a podcast forum. You 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 joined the service right outside of high school. Mm -hmm. how, how long were you in the service? Six years. So uh joined okay. at 17. Yeah. So so you you get out, you're about 24, 25 years old. Yep. Just to put in perspective, because I think that this goes all over all of our heads as civilians. Mm -hmm. Y'all are kids. Like, I like know. I gotta imagine Benjamin Cop is is his early 20s at best. Like just you're literally 21. kids. Yeah, he just turned 21. I remember talking with him and he was talking about uh getting home to have a beer it's for like legal beer he's just turned 21 yeah and it was like looking back at it it's only when I look at old pictures now I'm like dude I look like a like a kid I I look like a kid I look like a kid and I look at other people's pictures I'm like dude we were we were children 
But at the time, we felt like superheroes. We didn't feel like kids. We felt like we had the weight of the world on our shoulders and we were taking care of business, you know? That's what it felt. It, we were, it was exciting. It was, uh, for me, it was finally getting a chance to do something I've always wanted to do, dedicated my, my life to, you know, since as being as a kid and actually doing that job. I didn't feel like a kid. I felt like I was a kid in middle school, high school a little bit. But when I actually was doing what I wanted to do, I didn't feel like a kid anymore in the moment. I felt like a, like a, a grown man. I say that now. Now, now I'm a grown, a grown man. You know, I'm not a grown ass man yet. That's later on in life, but I'm a grown man now. I was grown back then, but still a kid, you know? Yeah, man, my heart hurts um, because, because you, you, you're, you're shining a reality on, on, on what these guys give. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, this, this, this guy is bragging about I can't wait to get home and have a legal beer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, He's literally mm -hmm. over there fighting for all of our freedoms. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. my, my, and, and, and gave and paid the ultimate price for it. Oh yeah. Just turned 21, wow. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.